Pat's Piano. Pat was cross. She didn't want to do her music practice. Miss Miggs, her teacher, was cross as well and locked the door of the room. And you shan't come out until you've played your scales and the minuet in G without a mistake. That made Pat even crosser. She sat down at the piano and brought her hands crashing down on the keyboard in a sulky tantrum. Ow, said the piano. That hurt. Pat stared. Good gracious, I didn't know you could talk. Why should I? when you thump my keys as if you hated them. And while we're about it, when are you going to learn something interesting? The tunes you play are so dull. To Pat's amazement, the black and white keys began to move, although her fingers weren't touching them. Oh, I do wish I could do that, she said delightedly. Can you play scales as well? The piano rippled right from the bottom note to the top and back again. That's terrific! Pat wondered if Miss Miggs was listening. Will you play the minuet in G without any mistakes? So the piano played the minuet in G. It didn't thump out the tune. The notes skipped along so lightly that they made Pat dance round the room. She only just sat down in time as Miss Miggs unlocked the door. Miss Miggs seemed very surprised. That was excellent, Pat. Next week you can learn the Turkish Rondo. After she'd made friends with the piano, Pat began to look forward to her music lessons. She was never cross or sulky, and she stroked the keys gently and tickled the piano under its chin. She polished its lid and brought a sprig of flowers each week for the piano to wear in its empty brass candle holders. In return, the piano helped her to play. The keys moved by themselves. Pat only had to put her fingers in the right places. You're doing so well, announced Miss Miggs one day, that you could play in my summer concert. Every year, all the mothers and fathers came to listen to Miss Miggs's best pupils. Pat had never been asked to play in the concert before. We'll be best, she said to the piano, and it gave a little trill of agreement. But the piano was old and shabby and never moved out of the practice room. The concert was in the school hall. On the hall platform was a grand piano, very large, beautifully polished, and with its lid held up by a golden stick. You'd better practice your rondo, said Miss Miggs on the day before the concert. Pat sat down nervously. She made a mistake at once. I'm not very good, she whispered to the grand piano. Will you help me, please? The piano didn't answer. Pat stroked its keys and tickled it under the chin, but still it wouldn't speak to her. Please, begged Pat. I can't play all the right notes by myself. Then you shouldn't be allowed to touch me, said the grand piano crossly. I'm a very superior instrument and it snarled at her with all its teeth pat ran to find miss miggs the grand piano is much too grand for me may i use the dear old upright piano from the practice room that shabby old thing in my concert certainly not it, it may look shabby but it plays beautifully said pat she knew how disappointed the old piano would be to miss the concert they needed each other now, 
So Pat bit her lip nervously and said, If the old piano can't be in the concert, I won't be in it either. But your name's already printed in the programme. Oh, very well then. So next day, the shabby old piano was pushed into the hall. When the concert began, all the other performers played the grand piano. Mothers and fathers clapped, and the grand piano looked very pleased with itself. When it was Pat's turn, she sat down at the shabby, upright piano. Let's show them, she whispered. The piano played the Turkish rondo beautifully. Everyone clapped. Pat began to stand up. But to her horror, the piano said, Don't be in such a hurry. I don't get many chances to perform in concerts. I'm going to play an encore. You're what? Before Pat could object, the piano had begun. It played a very fast piece with lots of difficult chords. Pat found it very hard to keep up, and by the end she was exhausted. Oh, oh, did anyone notice? She wondered, mopping her forehead. But the audience were clapping and cheering. Miss Miggs looked very surprised. And the grand piano sulked. Pat stood up and curtsied. The piano would have curtsied too, but its hinges and joints were too old, so it trilled its highest note instead. It almost gave the game away. Luckily, nobody noticed. And when Pat was presented with a bright bouquet of flowers, she laid it at once on the piano's lid and whispered, Thank you.